A couple months ago, Jaguar Land Rover announced that they wanted to make an electric variant of every vehicle in their lineup in the next couple years, by 2021. And we reported on the story a few months back, so you may have seen that already, but today we actually have a lot more information on that platform, how it's going to be accomplished, and a couple of the first models that are going to have a full electric variant coming out next year and the following. If you find this topic interesting, I encourage you to head over to our website or now you can check us out on Apple News where you can find more detailed information and a more in-depth story. And also go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on these great news topics across the automotive industry. Well, let's go ahead and dive into the story. Jaguar Land Rover recently held an event for analysts and investors and in that event they talked about their plans to bring electrification to all the vehicles in their lineup. It was announced that the first vehicles to see this electrification would be a large luxury SUV and a large luxury sedan. So there's a little bit of speculation here, but it's also pretty much a sure thing based on leaks, rumors, and just common sense about what vehicles are in their lineup. That these first couple of vehicles are going to be the replacement for the Jaguar XJ and the next generation Range Rover. So to quickly go over what this new platform is, and again you can find more details on this on the full story, but they will be built on the Modular Longitudinal Architecture, or MLA for short, which is Jaguar's new platform that they're bringing to these vehicles. One of the key takeaways of this platform is how highly modular it is, meaning it can easily be adapted to different size vehicles or different needs, whether it be front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, all wheel drive, uh, different lengths of wheel bases, different ride heights, things like that is very adaptable, but can all be built on essentially the same pieces, which makes it, uh, for a more efficient manufacturing process and easier repairs in the future and kind of the whole point of this is to increase efficiency by having a very consistent lineup. So one of the pieces from this event that I thought was really interesting is that the replacement for the XJ which is expected to come out next year so that would be the first of these vehicles the full electric variant is actually going to come to market first with six cylinder variants coming later. So the full EV variant will have a 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is supposed to provide a range up to 292 miles. We don't yet know any performance numbers, or zero 060s, things like that, but with a roughly 290 mile range, that's a pretty good number and should be pretty stiff competition uh, versus other cars on the market. But with that being said, there's also a lot of great vehicles coming to the market next year for full EVs, namely the Porsche Taycan, the Audi uh, e-tron GT as well as obviously the Tesla Model S. And for those of you that are familiar with Jaguar you will know that uh, back in 2018 they released the I-PACE which is their full electric SUV. The Jaguar I-PACE is actually a one-off platform, it is not based on the MLA architecture so don't uh, necessarily compare that to what we're seeing in these new vehicles. It was a one-off to really get this out to market. So I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years time we see a refresh of the I-PACE that'll actually place it on the MLA platform. Finally, on the Range Rover side of things, both the new Range Rover and Range Rover Sport will both be placed on the new MLA platform. Obviously, we're seeing a theme here. And actually, both of those models are expected in 2021. So they're a little bit further out in time frame, but they will both have full electric variants as well as plug-in hybrids and naturally, or excuse me, not naturally aspirated, but it, just a normal uh, internal combustion engine. Both of these vehicles are likely to feature the new inline six engine that Jaguar and Land Rover have come out with lately. We did a video on it just last week, so go ahead and check that out as well. It's kind of an interesting inline six with a su electric supercharger and turbocharger on it and a mild hybrid system, so super high tech engine, and it is obviously gonna be replacing the supercharged V6s in the near future and with these new generation of models coming out there has been no talk about a supercharged v8 making their way back to them so i think what we can kind of expect here is that on launch and in the first couple of years maybe there probably won't be a v8 but if there's enough demand i would not be surprised if jaguar land rover came out with you know their sv autobiography or something like that high-end trim that brings back the supercharged v8 for those customers but Generally, across the board, we're probably not going to be seeing V8s in the new generation of vehicles. 
Jaguar Land Rover really seems to be looking forward and looking to the future and where they need to position their company. And they're making great moves to get there now with the introduction of these new high-tech engines to help bridge the gap into full EVs in the coming future. And with the development of this new MLA platform, they're really setting in place all the pieces they need to make a smooth and continual and widespread transition into full EVs over the next several years. And I think it's really exciting to see an auto, an auto manufacturer take such a proactive approach here and really not be waiting for regulation to tell them what they have to make the transition to full EVs. They're doing it as sort of a strategic advantage over the competition, as well as they just feel that's the way for them to distinguish themselves and move into the future and not be caught off guard. So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this story. Make sure you drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this transition into the full electric vehicles for Jaguar Land Rover. And what do you think of them getting rid of the supercharged V8? I know that'll be kind of hard to take at the beginning, but I think they'll still have some pretty great offerings for us and I can't wait to test drive them in the future. But again, if you're looking for more information on the story, we have a full detailed story written up on our website and also on Apple News. You can find us there, both under Fox Automotive. And finally, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you find this video interesting. We bring you short, uh, condensed news stories like this, some of the top stories in the automotive industry, a couple videos each week. And if you're looking for day-to-day -day news stories, make sure you check us out on our website and Apple News because we have many stories that go up there that don't even make it to YouTube. So if we can really be your source for automotive news, make sure you go and check us out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.